Flashback 4, Athlone at Night. Flashback 4.0, Eerie Evenings in Athlone. Deputy Taylor suggested we have dinner at the cultist pub as a way to scope it out while getting some food. Bob challenged, however, Look, Deputy, I am all for a nice night out, but isn't seeing all of us together in the very establishment that we intend to take kind of a big clue that we are with Richard, the fulcrum of the Millmore bloodline? No, I don't think it's a good idea. Katie just said, Don't we have to be present to present your ownership papers or something? To legally take it, as you say? Take their assets? I mean, we aren't goons or thugs beating people up to take their money and property, right? And wouldn't they just go to the police if we did? I answered, I think the deputy and Katie are both right. But I think Katie's being proper and adhering to the legal process is the right thing for us to do. Even if it does weaken our hand against the cult. But we know they will resist and decline. And turning over the money is not going to be the first thing they'll agree to. They will not turn over the money, the assets, or the property to us, I'm pretty sure. But first, we should present the legal documents to them from Midnight and Associates that show we are the rightful legal owners and scope out their operation and key people as we do that. And when they decline to hand everything over, well, we'll just leave. And then we'll devise an assault plan. The deputy looked over, nodded. The deputy nodded and looked at Katie. And we will be armed and on alert at all times, especially when in enemy territory. We will manage what we say, particularly when we are in earshot of anyone outside our team. And with that, the deputy said to everyone, Hooah! Katie and Bob followed on with their perceived obligation to acknowledge their acceptance of the plan, and so likewise said, Hooah! Hooah! Bob's hooah was quite unenthusiastic again. Bob said glumly, Remember, the cult wants us dead. We can't just stroll around these areas that we think may harbor cult members all willy-nilly. We need to think about real danger, life-threatening danger. Bob emphasized life-threatening danger. I think we need to stick together even if we are seen as a team because I'm not prepared to get into a fight for my life without an expert fighter like Spec Ops Deputy Taylor there watching out for me. I mean, for us. Bob was visibly shaken from what appeared to be an overwhelming anxiety and fear attack. He was probably right, though, to feel that way. But we were all in this together. So we had to work these things out as a united team. Bob continued, Also, Richard, you assembled a good team with diverse skills. If we split up, we no longer have a super team. We would just be a group of people or four individuals that are separate all alone. Why would we choose to lose our superpower of our wide range of talents and increase the risk of our harm or even death? Only in the hopes that we might not be seen together in that particular instance, whereas we can be identified as a team traveling together all over the place. We're even in the same hotel. Come on, there is safety in numbers. We are stronger together. I respect Deputy Taylor's view of split team benefits, but we are not all special operation ex-military people like she is. In fact, only she is. We can't be assigned roles that require us to be spec op soldiers. That is not our role or our job. It never has been. That's Deputy Taylor's job. I mean, come on. Richard, you gotta keep the band together. <laughs> Bob kind of tried to joke, trying to offset his doom and gloom narrative that if we separate, we're all gonna die. Katie spoke up awkwardly. Bob has a point. 
I would feel a whole lot better if we stayed together, and I do think we need Deputy Taylor a lot. I don't want to be separated from her. When we're on a mission or in some foreign place like this, it's really strange. Well, let's be honest. We need Deputy Taylor. We need everyone together. Well, so I threw my opinion into the mix. I agree with Bob and Katie. We are a team. We need to operate as one. There may be some solo or sub-team missions here and there, but they should be the exception, not the rule. I hope. And yeah, Deputy Taylor is our muscle, for sure. She's our veteran in strategy and combat, not to mention personal direct force... influencer. Yeah, bottom line, yeah, we need Deputy Taylor. She's our muscle. She's a strategist. She's the influencer. Got it. And with that, we would proceed as a single team, not alone. We asked the hotel clerk for directions to the pub, which was called the Hanging Albatross. The clerk immediately turned slightly pale, hearing the name, as his blood rushed towards his body's core, as if from a burst of adrenaline from a life-threatening shock. The clerk was visibly trembling. He answered, The hanging albatross is, well, um, it's pretty rough. You may want to dine here in the hotel, or maybe another family restaurant up the road. They all have excellent food. And they have a really good ambiance. Would you like me to make a reservation for you somewhere else? I replied, No, we want to go to the Hanging Albatross. Can you give us directions there? Please, I implored. Okay, I'll write the address and walking directions down for you. It's pretty close. At least, you know, 15 minutes walk. He wrote the information down on a hotel notepad handed the sheet to me, and then he smiled, almost eerily, good luck. <laughs> <laughs>